And welcome to this hour's news review. Palestinians hold a funeral for a two-year-old boy who died after being shot by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank. A massive funeral procession was held in Nabi Saleh village, northwest of the city of Ramallah. On Thursday, two-year-old Mohammed Haytham Tamimi was in a car with his parents when the regime troops shot him in the head. He was taken to a hospital where he remained on life support until he was pronounced dead. Now, the shooting happened during an Israeli raid on the village. His mother says Israeli forces intentionally shot the car with her baby in it. The incident was intentional. When I went to check on my son and I told the Israelis that my son was killed, they said, stand back or I'll shoot. I am his mother and he told me, stand back or I'll shoot. But thank God for everything. Mohammed's mother is calling for justice for her son, holding all those involved in the incident accountable. Meantime, Iran's foreign ministry spokesman Nasser Kanani says all supporters of Israel are responsible for its crimes. Islamic Jihad resistance movement also says Israel's targeting civilians shows its continued systematic terrorism. The movement has urged further resistance to take revenge for the blood that has been spilled. Over 150 Palestinians, including 26 children, have been killed in Israeli attacks across the occupied West Bank so far this year. I'd like to welcome my guests to this news review. Out of Montreal, Eves Engler, author and a political activist. And out of Midlands, UK, Sarah Wilkinson, British pro-Palestinian activist. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, Eves, let me start off with you. I mean, this is just a, a horrible story, and, and we hear so many horrible stories that we're continually reporting on uh, from the Israeli regime, what it does to Palestinians. But at the end of the day, it seems like it, these Western countries that talk about human rights, I mean, I haven't been monitoring it today. How much do they really cover it? Where's the emotional side of the story? Where is it talking about what is a two-year-old guilty of? Why don't we see any of that coming out of the West? Because they are uh, complicit. They are supporting this. They are Israel's uh, expansionism, Israeli blackmail, and uh, and so they don't condemn. They don't want to condemn themselves. Essentially, how do you say? I mean, how do they continually turn a blind eye to these unbelievable crimes? I mean, it's not the first time that we have a child or a toddler killed. We saw when Israel attacked Gaza recently and children were killed again. Um, Eve said because they don't want to be implicit. Of course, they are. Um, what is it going to take to break through this type of uh, control of the media that the people, a lot of the people, don't even realize what's happening on the ground there? Sarah? Oh, hello. Is that a question for me? Yes. Um, yeah. Um, first of all, condolences to the parents and to the family of the child. I think talking about Mohammed's killing, um, there's no way that you can do this without being insensitive. Um, but um, in my view, uh, they're, not, they're not turning a blind eye to this. This was an intentional killing. The child was shot first. I believe the father's shoulder injury was from the same bullet. So this was a child a two-year-old child that was executed. And I, and I think people need to really hold on to that information. This, this was not crossfire. This was not an error. The only error that the Israeli army made in this instance was that they didn't shoot him outright and kill him. They, this was a story that lasted for four days because he survived on life support. And although we probably knew that he was not going to survive the injuries, Israeli media they've had four days of this story. So the only error was that that soldier did not execute him and do the job in one go. So I think we have to really talk about this as state terrorism, the worst kind. People are um, 
saying that it's similar to the shooting or the killing of Mohammed al Dura in the year 2000. Actually, I don't think that this is similar. This was a, a, almost a point blank. It was a close range, targeted execution of a two year old boy. And the mentality of an Israeli soldier that actually point the barrel of his gun, and I believe it was a male soldier, and that knowingly shoot a two year old in the head, we have reached a very dangerous area where, where humans are behaving so despicably. I'm not entirely sure where this goes. He's not the first child, you're right. There's actually been 30 children uh, under the age of 18 killed this year. Um, this one, I would say, was a targeted execution. And, and I think that's a word that we need to hold on to and we need mm. to use because uh, he, this soldier knew what he was doing. He was with insight. The father was a secondary target. He was not shot first. He was shot by the same bullet. So that soldier went to kill the child first, knowingly. And even the army have admitted that it was an intentional killing. So I, I think the language around this, this is worse than state terrorism. This is execution of children. Mm. They are executing Palestinian children, which is one step I think that are further from what we have been talking about before. Yeah, indeed. Well, Eve's, um, as Sarah said about the numbers uh, of kids who've been killed this year, and in general, this year we have seen, um, it's almost an unprecedented year in the number of murders or executions that have been taken, uh, that have been implemented by the Israeli regime against Palestinians. Why are we seeing this this year, particularly, Eves, and, and what is it going to take to stop it? Well, I mean, I think, unfortunately, there's been lots of bouts of intense uh, Israeli violence, of course, 2014 in Gaza, 2009. Uh, uh, you know, so they, I don't know that the numbers are actually necessarily worse, maybe in the West Bank. Right, uh, in the West year. Bank, in the West Bank. Which is because I think that there is um, there is a resistance uh, a forming, particularly among uh, younger Palestinians who are fed up with the uh, Palestinian uh, so-called leadership uh, acquiescing to Israel's ongoing um, uh, settlement expansion, dispossession, colonization. Um, also, the fact that you have these even more uh, extreme uh, Jewish supremacists uh, that are the government in Israel, uh, that, that also, I think, is a factor in, in, uh, in this uh, dynamic. Now, to the question of what's going to stop it, um, what's going to stop it is when the, the outside forces that have been uh, subsidizing it and I include my Canadian government, uh, obviously the U.S. government, uh, the U.K. Uh, uh, historically, when those governments decide they're, they're not, no longer going to subsidize it. I, I don't mean just like, you know, providing you know, standard diplomatic support, but there is a whole host of ways in which the Canadian government, Canadian politicians provide unique forms of support to, uh, to the apartheid regime. Uh, we literally announced a special rapporteur to basically oppose criticism of Israel. We have these charities in Canada that fund settlement projects that support the IDF, uh, that fund racist organizations in Israel. There's no other country in the world where Canada has these charities doing that for, and certainly with regards to a rich country. Um, so, so, so long as that continues, uh, so long as, you know, the people who are opposing apartheid and, and settler colonialism, someone like Roger Waters, who stands up and opposes this, and is then, you know, smeared in, incessantly as being uh, anti-Jewish, so long as the political dynamics that allow something like that to happen in North America, in, in Western Europe, uh, uh, unfortunately, the result of that is going to be more uh, Palestinian children, like we just this hor horrible story we're seeing, um, being killed. I mean, and so, okay. so that's a question of yeah. civil society in these countries uh, standing up and saying no more. Hmm. Well, Sarah, uh, you heard what Eve said, what it's going to take, but, but isn't it actually the main thing is the resistance? 
in order to put that pressure from put that pressure on the Israeli regime from inside in order perhaps to get these Western countries to um, stop backing this racist regime. I mean, how do you see the role of the resistance in all of this? Because as you pointed out correctly, with the more and more young people getting on board, because basically it's fight back or die or be killed, to be exterminated. So in many ways they have no choice and they have come to that realization. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, and I think the, the, the resistance can work both ways. I, I think that obviously the Palestinian resistance movement, uh, part of the reason that the Israelis are clamping down and trying to crack down so thoroughly on uh, areas where Palestinian resistance or, or there are hubs, you know, and uh, recruitment hubs, if you like. But at the same time, resistance has this funny effect on Westerners who uh, would rather find it easier, I'm not saying everyone, but they find it easier if the Palestinians are victims, they find it very, very difficult when they stand up and they actually try to defend themselves. So actually, they lose some support by, the, by their act of resistance, even though the majority of us support Palestinian resistance. And, and let me make it clear that I support Palestinian resistance. And I also now, you know, I have to support armed struggle because with the mentality of um, an Israeli soldier that can shoot a two-year-old, a targeted execution in the manner that it was, then there is no other way forward but armed struggle okay. and resistance. But it does have, it can have a negative effect. And like I say, some people would prefer Palestinians just to be victims. And they can't really handle the idea of resistance. So uh, yeah, it's twofold. Okay. All right, and on that note, I thank both of you for being with me on this news review. Eves Engler, author and political activist out of uh, Montreal. Sarah Wilkinson, British pro-Palestinian activist out of Midlands, UK. And thank you, viewers, for being with us for another news review.